Hello students, this is K. Sandhya, Assistant Professor of Chemistry, Mathrasha Engineering College. I am here today to discuss about the gaseous fuels, that is CNG and LPG, that are mostly used in our day-to-day -day lives. So, let's start with uh, a discussion on LPG. LPG, it's the most common form of uh, the gaseous fuel that we come across in day-to-day -day life. And this form of gaseous fuel is commonly available in the cylindrical container that's used as the domestic fuel in most of our places. And of course, this LPG is also used as fuel these days in automobiles and also used as a fuel in several industries. So this has taken a very important kind of um, position as a fuel farm in day-to-day -day life everywhere across the world. You have this gas used in the form of uh, it's supplied in the form of cylinders everywhere for domestic as well as for industrial purposes. So this is the most convenient form of the fuel that can be used as it can be easily packed off in the cylindrical forms and uh, can be carried transported from one place to another easily. Now what is this basically an LPG form of a gas. It's called as liquefied petroleum gas. Now, what do you mean by the term liquefied? This is actually the form of hydrocarbon content which can be existing in gaseous form under normal conditions but can be brought to a state of liquid under pressure. So, this liquefied petroleum gas is actually the liquefied form of fuel under pressure. So what kind of hydrocarbons can be used in order to make sure that we have the liquefied form in it? Usually C1 to C4 carbon contents are considered to be gaseous in the natural atmosphere. That is under natural conditions the carbon 1, 2, 3, 4 are considered to be gaseous forms. But what we are trying to do is, we are trying to liquefy and store them. So, under this liquefied state, if we have to attain, the C3 and C4 carbon contents are usually suitable for liquefying the gaseous form under pressure. So, we are trying to actually liquefy the petroleum, I mean petroleum gas we call it as petroleum gas because it is attained again during the fractional distillation of petroleum. Okay, so we are obtaining this as a combustible gas during the processing of crude oil. Now this liquefied petroleum gas is considered to be majorly a mixture of propane and butane with small amounts of ethane and propene obtained from gas wells. So during the extraction process of crude, uh, crude oil, we have actually a layer of this gaseous fuel existing above the crude oil layer. So we have all the time a, a layer of natural gas that exists above the layer of crude oil. So we can actually extract this crude oil along with the natural gas and that can be properly utilized as a combustible matter, that is as a fuel. So LPG is a mixture of protein, propane and butane with small amounts of ethane and propane obtained during the extraction of crude oil. Now what happens during the processing is LPG which is considered to be C3 and C4 constituent in nature is actually fractionated and obtained separately 
and these are filled up in cylinders in the pressure so that you get the liquefied form of it and it can be conveniently used so whenever you are using gas cylinders you are actually using this lpg form that is propane and butane constituents in it as fuel and these are actually compressed to form liquid so it is supplied in the form of cylinders in various uh, brand names such as bharat hp indian etc now when you consider the calorific value of the fuel you can see that it is about 27800 kilo calorie per meter cube this is because the high calorific value of the fuel is majorly contributed due to its efficient way of burning in the presence of air because it readily mixes with air and the carbon constituents are completely efficiently burnt in the presence of air so we have gaseous fuels usually with higher efficiency than the other two forms of fuels that is liquid and solid forms of fuels so the major advantage of using lpg as a fuel is it's actually using the carbon constituents of lower carbon content at the same time with high efficiency the major advantage of it is it has greater efficiency at the same time it is easily transportable hence it is used as both domestic as well as an industrial fuel now the major advantages of these lpg gas forms is it is highly knock resistant i guess in the previous lectures there could have been discussion about knocking knocking is the tendency of the fuel to actually inefficiently work in the engine leading to a very loud sound leading to the breakdown of the engine over a period of time so this knocking is prevented when you are using liquefied petroleum gas so the smooth working of the engine can be ensured when lpg is used as the fuel in automobiles so it has great high knock rate knock resistance with high calorific value and burns with less smoke so it's a clean kind of a fuel which has less pollutants evolved as i told you these are mainly constituting of c3 and c4 carbon so on burning it is giving less carbon emission in its oxidized forms so it has less carbon emission and therefore it is considered to be a green product which can be used conveniently in in order to run the um, automobiles at the same time it can be used conveniently at homes and in industries and the major advantage is it is transported easily portability to supply so that is the major advantage of lpg so when it is liquefied you can carry it to various places conveniently but of course with a lot of care and the major disadvantage of using this lpg is due to the faint odor leakage cannot be detected so unlike the uh, other forms of chemicals say if you consider sulfur or if you consider any organic um, compounds like esters which have their own kind of odor by which you can easily recognize that this is actually the gas which is coming out which is present over here whatever chemical is present around but in case of lpg we cannot detect its presence because it does not have any odor of its kind so we cannot detect the leakage of lpg as such but you would be able to notice a strong pungent smell when there is leakage at our domestic levels 
like if there is any gas leakage you would be able to smell it immediately now that smell that you get at domestic levels of cylinders is majorly not due to the the hydrocarbons that are present in lpg but it is due to various additives that are actually added in order to give that pungent smell so as such the hydrocarbons do not have any odor their leakage cannot be detected easily therefore if at all there is any kind of fire hazards that occur that occurs in the place it leads to greater damage because until you have the complete leakage you wouldn't be even able to detect at the place what is happening so that's the major disadvantage of lpg and it it could be overcome using the sulfur compounds added along with lpg sulfur organic sulfur compounds like mercaptan when it is added along with lpg will actually imp impose or you can say it actually imparts an odor to lpg and this helps out to detect the leakage of the gas so that we are aware of it and we can take enough precautions about the leakage so that prevents the major damage that would that could occur due to leakage so sulfur or organic compounds are usually added along with lpg in order to detect its leakage so basically the major uses of it is domestic fuel industrial fuel and motor fuel so lpg is considered to be a highly efficient form of fuel in our day to day life and this is conveniently used and transported from one place to another in the form of compact cylinders so this is all about lpg now coming to another major form of gaseous fuel that is used in the present days is cng that is compressed natural gas this compressed natural gas is different from lpg based upon its carbon constituent in natural gas the mixture mainly constituting of methane say about 60 to 95% of the c1 to c4 constituents when they are actually removed and only methane is sustaining then we consider that to be the natural gas with methane okay which is conveniently used in the form of compressed natural gas and apart from methane there could be small amounts of hydrogen carbon dioxide and helium present along with it so these are all if you observe are majorly the most light form of gaseous forms present so when you observe their physical state they would exist only in gaseous state under all conditions even if you apply pressure you wouldn't be able to con con uh, convert them into liquefied form because c1 cannot be easily converted to liquid form it is always existing in the gaseous form so this cng which is directly used as a gaseous form is actually used conveniently as a <clears throat> a gas which is used for running your automobiles as well as it is used at the domestic levels and industrial levels now what happens is when cng cannot be liquefied it has to be totally managed in the form of gaseous fuel so it has to be stored properly under stringent temperatures and pressure conditions a pressure of about 16 to 25 bar in the cylinders is maintained in order to make sure that the gas the compressed natural gas is just not exposed to any kind of leakage so this is the kind of measurement that we need to take care of in order to conveniently use the cng at places required so this is this has to be maintained with pressure and stringent temperatures so that it doesn't completely get volatile at the place it is conveniently and efficiently used 
the calorific value of CNG gas is slightly less than the LPG because it's constituting of only methane. Okay, so it is uh, having an, a, a calorific value to about 12,000 to 14,000 kilocalorie per meter cube. So this is considered to be a very, very efficient form of gaseous fuel at the same time having more advantages than any other form of fuel. This is mainly because you have the CNG, which is having only methane form of hydrocarbon. And when it burns in the presence of air, it is emitting less amount of carbon dioxide and less amount of tendency to form carbon monoxide after combustion. So CNG is considered to be an efficient as well as a green form of a fuel. So it is wherever it is used, you can see that the vehicle is specified that it's CNG, which is used as fuel. And it is usually, you, you can see the vehicles being painted green. So usually that marks that it's actually evolving less of, I mean, it's, it's involving less pollution into the atmosphere. So that's actually the kind of cleanest form of gaseous fuel we are using as of now. There are few disadvantages associated with CNG, but there are certain um, ways by which it has uh, been overcome by most of the techni uh, technicalities. So we have the CNG, which is majorly used as an alternate fuel form other than petrol and diesel as an automobile fuel. So it has the least environmental pollution cost and it is the most cost efficient, that is it's cheaper in cost. And vehicles powered by CNG produce less carbon monoxide and high, less carbon emissions, so it's majorly used. But of course, we are not using it in a greater proportion. We have very few stations of CNG. And you can see that most of these auto rickshaws, rickshaws are using the CNG because of its cheaper rate as well as its convenience and usage. So the major uses of this is actually as a motor fuel, as a locomotive fuel, also used as domestic fuels. Now, there are certain areas in our city which are actually lined up with CNG pipelines. This is going on um, a kind of uh, uh, experimental analysis, how it is feasible in India. Most of the advanced countries use CNG as the gas fuel at domestic levels. There are pipelines which run through uh, several colonies, but we are not sure how far it is feasible in our country. We are still going through with trials on the CNG. So some of the localities have been already installed with CNG pipelines. And this is actually considered to be a viable kind of fuel even for domestic usages. But to be taken care with the way it is handled. That is to be ensured in our place. So as a domestic fuel, we are not using it to a greater extent. But yes, as a motor, locomotive fuel, and for uh, various industrial levels, it is conveniently used. So this is all about the gaseous fuels and uh, the constituents present in the gaseous fuels. So I end up my session with this topic of gaseous fuels uh, with CNG and LPG, its constituents, its um, advantages of using and majorly the disadvantages that we have to overcome. So thank you.